Hi, this is David at Mash IT, and tonight we're going to be doing another comparison review. Now, I'm always looking to find the perfect ultra portable laptop for myself, which is what prompted me to start the channel. A laptop I can take everywhere with a great screen, speakers, keyboard, and battery life. And this year, a lot of manufacturers are moving back to 16 by 10 screens finally, and they've also massively improved battery lives, so we're seeing some great options being released. Now today I want to compare two of my current favourite Ultrabooks, the X1 Carbon Gen 9, an incredibly popular business class notebook which Lenovo have finally updated with Tiger Lake, a 16x10 screen and better speakers and battery so it benefits more for a multimedia use as well as just a business class laptop. And that's going to be going against Microsoft freshly updated Surface Laptop 4, a 13.5 inch powered AMD Ryzen laptop. So before we put these head to head, I want to talk about pricing. Obviously we have a highly specced X1 Carbon and we have the base model Ryzen Surface laptop. But even if we compare the base model Carbon, which has got an i5, 8GB of RAM and 256GB, which matches the Surface laptop specs, there's still a £500 difference in price. The Lenovo Carbon is just a lot more expensive. Now some of this is for the Intel tax, but the X1 Carbon is an incredibly expensive laptop. So with that in mind, let's see how they look head to head. Now although these laptops have different screen sizes and aspect ratios, they are incredibly close in size. The Xbox Carbon looks like a business class machine with its black soft touch chassis. This can attract fingerprints and oils which easily leave marks, so you will forever be cleaning it, but it feels very nice to the touch and provides a bit of grip when carrying it. The Surface on the other hand has an aluminium external build which gives it a cold solid feel and doesn't show fingerprints as easily. Both laptops look great in my opinion, but I do prefer the soft touch finish of the X1 Carbon. Now moving on to the ports, on the left side the X1 Carbon has 2x Thunderbolt 3 ports, a USB 3 port and an HDMI 2 port. Now in contrast to that the Surface laptop has one USB 3 and one USB-C port and a headset jack. Now if you move it round to the right side the X1 Carbon has a headset jack, a USB 3 port and a Kensington lock whereas the Surface only has the Surface Connect port which is only used for charging or the Surface dock. So in comparing these two laptops, the X1 has an easy win when it comes to the ports. Now we're going to weigh both these machines. So the X1 Carbon Gen 9, that weighs 1.16 kilograms or 2 pounds 8.5 ounces. And then if we add the power adapter, that takes us up to 1.36 kilograms or three pounds and 0.2 of an ounce. So it's quite a nice felt package. Now let's try that with the Surface laptop. 1.262 kilograms, two pounds, 12.5 ounces. And if we add the power adapter, that takes us up to 1.496 kilograms, or pretty much 1.5 kilograms, or three pound, 4.8 ounces. So you can see the X1 Carbon is very slightly lighter even though it's got a slightly bigger screen. It is only about 100 grams in it though. Now let's open them up and look inside. Both these machines are well engineered and can be opened with one hand. The hinges both feel solid and there's no excessive wobble. Looking to the laptop's decks, you can see the X1 has the same soft touch finish on the palm rest as it does on the exterior of the actual chassis. Whereas the base model surface has the Alcantara finish. So not really a lot to say about the X1, except it feels great on your palms, but it does quickly pick up oils and fingerprints, so you will be regularly cleaning it. But with regards to the Surface laptop with the Alcantara finish on the base model, the fabric style finish feels great under your palms, and I absolutely love it. It gives the laptop a unique look against the sea of black or silver laptops that are usually out there. But that's not to say it doesn't come with any downsides. Although I've had plenty of Surface devices in the past with the Alcantara type covers and they've all held up really well, that's not to say after a couple of years of solid day-to-day -day use it's not going to look pretty grubby. Also with the construction on the Alcantara models there is a lot of flex, so if this is something that is going to bother you then you may want to consider changing the configuration to the full metal Surface laptop models. Moving to the touchpads, both models have great touchpads with Windows Precision drivers and they both respond well to touch and gestures. The Surface Laptop has a slightly larger trackpad than the X1 Carbon because the X1 Carbon utilises some of the top space for the track point buttons. But regardless of which laptop you choose, you will be happy with the touchpad. Moving up to the keyboards, both laptops have great keyboard layouts. They have great pressure and feedback and both have white backlit keys. But in my opinion, the X1 keyboard gets the win for two reasons. 
One, it has very little flex compared to the Surface laptop, though I expect if you chose the full metal version of the Surface, that would have minimal flex like the X1. And two, I love the X1's concaved keys. They have a slightly better feel than the flat keys on the Surface. And I know this is nitpicking, but obviously I am comparing the two and I do prefer typing on the X1 Carbon. Now on the X1 Carbon, you can see the side flank speaker grills, plus you have two downward firing speakers, providing great sound. Now on the surface, you cannot see any speaker grills anywhere, but the sound is also good. So let's take a listen and compare them. Right, so we're just gonna test the speakers now on both of these laptops. We're at 40% volume. We're running YouTube royalty-free music on both, and I'm gonna put the microphone from one to the other so that you can hear the difference. Right, so we're gonna start with the surface laptop. Now the X1. Fifty percent. Sixty per cent. So there you have it. Let me know what your thoughts are between the two down in the comment section down below. I think, in my opinion, just from sitting here in front of them both, the Surface Laptop 4 seems like it's a little bit louder, but I guess because the speakers are coming through the actual palm rest or keyboard area itself, it's not as, as crisp, the actual audio that's coming through. Whereas the X1 Carbon, with its two upward firing and two downward firing speakers, although it doesn't seem to be quite as loud as the Surface Laptop, it certainly seems a lot crisper and fuller sounding. Now moving up to the screens, you can see some big differences here. The X1 Carbon has a 400 nit 16 by 10 matte screen with narrow bezels, but it's only 1920 by 1200. Now there is a 4K option, which is glossy, but that again is quite a large upcharge if you want to go to that version. The Surface, on the other hand, is incredibly glossy, but it has a 3 by 2 aspect ratio and a higher DPI of 2256 by 1504, leading to an incredibly crisp display. Now, choosing the display is really a tough call. The positives for the X1 is that the 1200p is easier for the machine to drive, and you can easily run it at a native scaling, so there will be no scaling issues with any of the older software. Plus, being matte, it's easier on the eyes, especially in bright rooms or even outdoors. The Surface, on the other hand, it does get brighter at 500 nits, but it really needs this because the screen acts like a mirror. Now if you're in a darker room, the image quality is fantastic and it would easily be my preference. But in my day-to-day -day use, where I'm out and about with the laptop, I cannot control the light, so I would definitely be picking the X1's matte screen for my use. Another positive for the Surface screen is that it is touch enabled and you can use the Surface Pen that you can also use for the Surface Pro or the Surface Book. So if you want to be able to touch the screen or use the pen, then the Surface laptop is the way to go. Lastly, as we move up the laptops, we're going to look at the webcam mics and the facial recognition. Both these machines have Windows facial recognition, which works brilliantly, but the X1 also has an added benefit of a fingerprint reader in the power button. And with the Lenovo, you can easily disable the webcam if you need to ensure privacy, and then you can still log on with the fingerprint reader. Now here is what the webcams look and the mics sound like. So this is what the webcam and the mics look and sound like on the X1 Carbon Gen 9. And this is what the webcam and mics look and sound like on the Surface Laptop 4. Right, so we're going to do a very quick uh, boot test on both of these laptops just to see how fast they get into the operating system. So this is the real-time speed. Uh, you can clearly see that although the Surface seems to boot up a little bit faster initially, the X1 Carbon rips past it and gets me in much quicker. Right, so let's look at the performance. I'm not going to spend too much time in synthetic benchmarks, so I'm just going to quickly run some in the background as we talk through the actual benefits of each of these laptops. 
You can clearly see it's a single core win for the Intel Tiger Lake, but a multi-core win for the AMD Ryzen. What this will mean in day-to-day -day use is the Intel laptop will seem a lot snappier where you're utilizing that single core for day-to-day -day tasks like firing up applications and loading into Windows. But if you are using a lot of the cores for multitask applications, maybe you're video editing, rendering something, then that's when the sort of the Ryzen is gonna pull ahead. But when it comes to the onboard graphics, Intel wins hands down. But we're also gonna fire up a couple of games to test to see how the AMD does compare. Now yes, these are not gaming notebooks, but they can more than handle some casual gaming. So when you've finished your work and you wanna kick back and have a break, both of these will play some light gaming pretty well. So we're gonna do a couple of the gaming benchmarks now. Firstly, we're doing the Unigen Valley benchmark, and there's pretty much twice the performance on the X1 Carbon over the Surface Laptop 4. Now the X1 Carbon got 15 frames per second as opposed to the uh, Surface Laptop 4's 8.6. The second gaming benchmark we completed is the uh, Warhammer Total War benchmark. This is running at 1200 by 800 medium settings, so this is perfectly uh, playable and looks pretty good on the laptop. The X1 Carbon wasn't far ahead of the Surface Laptop 4. You're talking 76 frames per second in comparison to 60, both very playable. Now next we moved on to the Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, because obviously there's so much information on each of these screenshots, I've put them side by side. So first we got the X1 Carbon, which scored 35 frames per second on average, followed by the Surface Laptops 4's 20 frames per second. So a massive difference there. It's literally playable to unplayable between the X1 and the Surface Laptop 4. Then we're moving on to an old one, Company of Heroes 2, but a game I still like to play quite regularly. Now this is an older game, and the performances are very similar on this one. You're talking like 30 frames per second or 28 and a half frames per second, so both those are very playable for a real-time strategy game. So I also wanted to run Crystal Dismark on both these laptops with their stock SSDs that they came with. Now the X1 Carbon came with an SK Hynix SSD and the Surface Laptop 4 came with a Samsung. Surprisingly, the X1 Carbon absolutely destroyed the Surface Laptop 4 with read and write speeds. 3,500 read on the X1 Carbon as opposed to 1,800 on the Surface Laptop 4. So pretty much double the performance there. Now again, in day-to-day -day usage, you're not really gonna see a massive difference between the two. If you are copying over a lot of files on these drives, then you might notice it. Now we're just gonna compare the fan noise between both of these laptops. Use them on full load. I use my iPhone's decibel meter just to record the actual fan noise. Now the X1 Carbon had 47 decibels on full load with the actual phone right up close to the laptop. So the noise itself wasn't bad at all. And in day-to-day -day use, you hardly hear this laptop. Now the Surface Laptop 4, on the other hand, comes in at 45.5 decibels on full load use. Again, it was quite a pleasant sound in the background. If you've got the actual speakers going or a headset in, you won't even notice it. And listen to them side by side, there's not really a massive amount of difference. Neither of them are unpleasant, and they're both reasonably quiet, especially if you're used to gaming notebooks. So on to battery life. Both of these machines excel when it comes to battery life. You'll easily get a good 10 hours of battery on office and light use tasks. When we tested both these machines streaming over Wi-Fi, listening to some YouTube music, both easily hit 10 plus hours. The actual Surface laptop was actually going up to 11, 12 hours. Really impressive scores on the batteries. So on less demand in tasks, you can easily utilize both these machines for a whole day. Obviously, they're not in the same league as the Apple Silicon M1 laptops, but certainly Windows laptops are making great improvements with regards to battery life. Okay then, so on to the conclusion. Having put both these laptops head to head, you can see that they're both two brilliant machines, which is why I would certainly struggle to choose a winner between them. Now, if you're a casual user trying to get the best bang for your buck and you're happy with a glossy display, then my recommendation would have to be the Surface Laptop. For $1,000 or £1,000, Microsoft have actually provided a well-priced premium product. Now, if you have a little more money to burn, it's going to be a harder choice. The Lenovo is a lot more expensive until you start increasing the configuration on the Surface. And at that point, my preference would then be the Lenovo. I love the Lenovo's matte display. It has more powerful and more versatile ports than the Surface Laptop. It has an easily accessible 80mm M.2 SSD, whereas on the Surface it's a lot more difficult to get to the SSD and it's only a 30mm which are harder to source. Plus the Lenovo has the option that you can make it WAN enabled, so if you want to have your own mobile LTE, you can do that on this laptop. It makes it a much more flexible option, especially if you're you know, in a business environment where you're out traveling regularly with the machine. Throw in the ThinkPad keyboard and the better warranty options, in my opinion, it does make it a better business machine despite the higher price. Well, that brings us to the end of this comparison video. 
Please let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Which of these laptops would you pick? And please let me know why. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell as that helps us to create more videos and content for you. And lastly, thank you for watching.